Good morning, my brothers and sisters. Welcome to episode 46 of Be With Me. We're looking at different wrinkles of the crucifixion, and we're going to look at a passage in Luke chapter 23 today. 2326, and as they led him away, they seized one Simon of Cyrene who was coming in from the country and laid him laid on him the cross to carry it behind Jesus. And there followed him a great multitude of people and of women who were mourning and lamenting for him. But turning to them, Jesus said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For behold, the days are coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren and the wombs that never bore and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us and to the hills, cover us. For if they do these things, when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Let me just stop there for a second. So the women of the Bible here are honored once again. They're mourning and lamenting for what's happening to Jesus. So great, you know, wonderful thing to their credit. Uh, Jesus quotes a couple passages from the Old Testament saying, don't weep for me, weep for yourselves and even have the mountains fall on us because things are going to get worse. If things are happening right now when the wood is green and an innocent man is being uh, crucified, what's going to happen when the wrath of uh, either the wrath of God, I think it's actually the wrath of the Romans, happens 40 years from now uh, when things are universally worse. So they're going to uh, personally s- suffer, unlike just here, it's just one person uh, suffering. All right, so let me let me keep going here. This is verse 32 of Luke chapter 23. And two others who were criminals were led away to be put to death with him. And when they came to the place that is called the skull there, they crucified him and the criminals, one on his right and on his left. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they cast lots to divide his garments. And then verse 36 says, the soldiers also mocked him. All right, so I wanted to talk about, first of all, crucifixion uh, is used as a synonym here the words put to death. So crucifixion is a one-way road. No one ever, you know, survived crucifixion. It was a one-way trip to death. It was just a matter of time before you die. And the the verse that I really wanted to focus in on here is Jesus's first words. He says seven things from the cross. This is the first one. This is where he asks the Father. So he addresses the Father. Father, and intercedes and says, forgive them for they know not what they do. And this fulfills a prophecy from Isaiah 53, verse 12, which says, yet he bore the sins of many and he makes intercession for the transgressors. So here that Jesus making intercession for the transgressors, this is actually happen, happening. And so who are these transgressors? Who is it that Jesus is saying, forgive them? Is it uh, Judas? Is it Caiaphas? Is it Pilate? Certainly, I think it's the execution squad, the people that are around him that are um, uh, crucifying him. And that becomes important important later in the story because uh, at least one of them becomes a believer, the centurion, the guy that's in charge of this this, uh, death squad. So Acts 13, 17 says that the Jews acted in ignorance. And if they would have understood, this is from 1 Corinthians 2, 8, if they had understood it, they would have not crucified the Lord of glory. Or And these, you could say the same thing about the soldiers. If they would understand that this was the Son of God, they never would have done this. Um, so I wanted to get to this, this passage about... Uh, the the act of kindness that Jesus does while he is being tortured. So he's being crucified. Nails are being driven into him. He's already been beaten. And not just uh, in a just judicial sort of a way. They are making fun of him. They are mocking him. They are mocking him as, as, a, as a king. And we find here that the soldiers, even these soldiers... The crucifixion squad are mocking him now. 
So the whole world is is uh, turning against him. So I wanted to go to this passage about this crazy upside down world that the Lord asks us to participate in. This is from Luke chapter 6, 27. But I say to you who hear, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. To the one who strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from one who takes away your cloak, don't withhold your tunic either. So this is this crazy upside world, upside down world that the Lord asks us to participate in. And how does he ask us? Well, he's asking us by words here in Luke chapter 6, but he's going to ask us to participate in it by his actions uh, at the crucifixion. So let me finish up with Luke chapter 6. But love your enemies and do good and lend, expecting nothing in return, and your reward will be great, and you will be sons of the Most High. For he, now listen to this, this is what God is describing himself. For he is kind to the ungrateful and the evil. So this is a characteristic of God. He is kind to the ungrateful and the evil. And then verse 36, be merciful even as your father is merciful. So then he calls out to us, is do what I do, be like me. And we see this no, in no better place in history than this moment and probably with this exact prayer. Verse 34, and Jesus said, Father, forgive them. So these people are just abusing him, torturing him. And he says, Father, forgiveness, for, forgive them. It doesn't end there. The centurion becomes a believer. But this is where the rubber meets the road of Christianity. And he's demonstrating this uh, this thing that you and I are supposed to do. So he's giving us an example to father, example to f- follow. What sin could be worse than this con- than crucifying the actual Lord? And he's forgiving it. So, ladies and gentlemen, is there someone you need to forgive today? Is there someone you need to suffer well through? So expect transgressions, expect ungratefulness, expect evil in the world, and then decide now how you're going to handle it when you face this. Using Jesus as as an example, he intercedes for them. Father, forgive them, for they know not what to do. Oh, Jesus, you are the most wonderful example because you are kind to the ungrateful and the evil. May we do the same. Thanks for listening. See you tomorrow.